Grace and peace, beloved, you may be seated in the presence of God. It is my joy to gather with you this morning to take a moment to meditate on Psalm 148. And I just simply want us to let's praise the Lord. Will you Amen. pray with me? Lord, we really just want to praise you forever and ever and ever. Because you deserve all glory, honor, and praise. Amen. As we take a moment to meditate on this word, oh Lord, you know what it is to be praised. You know what has held us back from praising you. You know what it is that we long to praise you. And so God, right now, use me your servant to let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts to continue to be acceptable because you are always, mm. and I know that for a fact, you are our rock. You are our strength, and we bless you for being a great redeemer. Amen. Amen. Ah, I wish I knew the choir was going to sing that song, because <laughs> I would have chosen another song. But when I was thinking about Psalm 148, it took me back to my old church camp days. And I don't know if you guys went to church camp like I did, but there was a song we used to sing that went, hallelujah, hall oh, for those that don't know, pastor cannot sing. Her uncle and everybody else can. That's not my gift. But there was a song that we would sing in camp, and it simply went, Hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. How many went there? Y'all know that? Yeah. Now, at your camp, did they do what they did at my camp? We have two groups, and half was hallelujah, 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 and the other was praise ye the Lord. Yeah. All right, so be nostalgic with me for a minute. I'm going to make this half right here be hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. And everyone else be praise ye the Lord. Lord. Now you know you don't want me singing this. Yeah. So y'all gotta help. You ready? So for those that don't know what happens, when it's your turn, you stand up, hallelujah, 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 and sit down. The others go, praise ye the Lord. And we repeat to the end. Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. Okay, wait, wait. All right, sit down, sit down. Wait, wait. Um, Sister Angie, Dr. Al, Sister Susan, can I put you on the spot? Can you three come right here? Just come, come up, just come up front. Sister Beverly, Sister Susan, who else said they knew it? Everybody here knows it. Whole choir, come right here. Mm -hmm. Come, come, come. Oh my God. We're going to help you do this. You guys are going to be like this? When it's your turn, so you're going to start simply like this. So when it's your turn, you go up. Don't go too low because we know about the knees, all right? <laughs> when you see your side stand up, you guys stand up. And if you don't know the words, just go, la, 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 la. The Lord understands. Ready? Here we go. Go. Hello. Hello. Thank you. That's what it means to be all ye always ready. Oh my God, that song was so meaningful to me back in summer camp because during that time, the councils would use it at any point just to get our attention, to get us to worship, to get us be mindful of what's up. And there was so much in our souls that when we were by ourselves without the counselors, you would see us going, hallelujah, 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 praise ye the Lord. And this psalm is the perfect praise song. Amen. It's all about praising the Lord. It's one of those psalms that's in the last five books of the Bible, and it's right smack in the middle between 146 and 150. And if you know anything about your Bible, those last Hallel psalms are all about praising the yeah. Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord is the saying that we all Christians often say, right? How many times have you said praise the Lord? Praise Right? You Amen. said praise the Lord when something good happens. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when you made it through, like, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Or when someone accomplished something great, praise the Lord. You, we use it all the time. But are we mindful of what it means? 
Traditionally, these words, praise the Lord, was used as a testimony to the Lord. In English, we translated praise the Lord to hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, we know, is the highest praise. Amen. That's in English. However, for our Jewish Hebrew folks, praise the Lord was praise Yah, Amen. meaning praise Yahweh. And when they said hallelujah, it wasn't just about them explaining an exclamation how awesome God was. It was like, I said hallelujah, and I would encourage you to say hallelujah. Amen. So when I said hallelujah, you would respond. Hallelujah. Uh -uh. I would say hallelujah, and you would Lord. respond. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord. Hallelujah. It was such an exciting thing, but by the time they finished saying hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody was up on their feet praising God because it reminded them that you're called to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So as much as we like to think hallelujah is all about us and God, it really is not about that. It is the highest praise. And what makes it the highest praise is that everything that has breath praises the Lord. So in this psalm, it does two things. It talks about first who is called to praise the Lord, and then why they should praise the Lord. And they figured once you know who and why, you would do it all by yourself. Yes. And so it starts off with who in two realms. It's the heavens and the land, the sky and the earth, the heavens and the earth. All that was called to praise was everyone in the heavens and in the earth. Sounds familiar? Because in the beginning, God created what? Yes, yes, yes. So it starts with the heavens, the place in the space where the heavenly host hangs out, this place in the space where the army of God reigns, the place in the space where the great clouds of witness, those that leave us and go to the sweet by and by, they are in the heavenly realms, and they're the message of God worshiping and working all day long, and they are called to praise God. Also in the sky realm, it's also in the highest heights, it's the sun and the moon and the stars. Each of them are called to praise and bless the Lord. They fill a space and a place providing visions and glory for all to see. Every morning, every night, they testify because they do their purpose of praising the Lord. Amen. And they remind us of the one who's worthy of all our praise. To the realm of the skies, it says, everything above the scriptures says, let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, meaning he spoke and declared and willed that they would. And they were created and established and founded forever and ever, and he fixed them with bounds that could not be passed. The reason why they praise the Lord is because God created them just for that purpose. Amen. God established them so that they could praise, and he fixed the boundaries by which they were to offer their praise. God created them for the purpose of praise and established them so they could, and fixed them so their bounds would set to praise the Lord. And the reason why God did all of this is because God was the maker of heaven and earth. And when he spoke a word, it came into being. Amen. Then he founded them in the moment that he made sure they came into being. He made sure they existed forever and ever and forever and ever. The place where they reign, the place where the rain comes down, the places and the spaces, they are there by God and they are called to praise the Lord. And just like them, we too. We are called to praise, praise the Lord because God is indeed a worthy and as the heavenly host, they extend an invitation to anyone that looks up to the heavens and sees the glory of a new day or the setting of the sun. How many times have you looked at a sunrise and said, hallelujah, praise the Lord, or a sunset? Did you know not one of them are ever repeated? and has never been repeated. Morning by morning, God sets them in place so that they can remind you, if you're not going to praise God, I am going to do the work for you and invite you to join me to praise. Mm. And we are called to do the same. We've been created 
God has showered blessings upon blessings upon blessings on us. And we have, I hope you've experienced miracles, signs, and wonders in your life. Amen. Or experienced that Sabbath rest. Or the strength and the mercy and the peace that surpasses all understanding to guard your heart and mind. And when you experience these things like them, you are to praise the ye the Lord. Hallelujah. I would offer that praise is something we should always do. Because the Lord's creating power Amen. hasn't stopped. The Lord still commands yes. for things to be created yes, and yes. he recreates and creates us again and again yes, and again. Yes. And he speaks opportunities and possibilities into being. The Lord still declares visions for those to see. God is still helping our natural and our spiritual selves understand that God is still creating yes. and working in our lives. Yes. And that same God has established us making spaces and places for us to be and live and serve. And thanks be to God that the boundaries around us yeah. are set in pleasant places. Amen. And as much as people would want to push us around and mm. shove us mm. or question, how did you get there? Mm. Or who gave you that? Or why were you worthy of that blessing? Or how did you get that favor? All of that, you have to let them know, look, it's only because the God who is creator has yes. established me yes. and has fixed pleasant places for yes. me. Yes. And because those boundaries are pleasant, I say, praise, praise ye the Lord. The Lord. Yes. Not only is the heavenly realm called, well, I... Pause again, I think one thing about the heavenly realm. I'm mindful that the reason why they praise the Lord is because they understand a truth that the rest of us need to fully understand. You know how the heavens do their work and they know their job and they understand who the God is that created them. So does the earth. Amen. The earth also is the other realm where they're called to praise God. Yeah. What I found really interesting is that in this part of the earth that's called to praise the Lord was the fact that it started when it started with the earth. If you heard Sister Betty Wright, she went deep down into the sea with the sea monsters and all the things of the deep. The place of chaos and hurt and harm. And I was confused. I was like, why would they say the earth is supposed to fill? I was just thinking about the land, became mindful of that the earth actually includes everything under the earth and everything that walks on the earth. And even everything under the earth is supposed to praise God because if you remember Genesis 1, mm -hmm. when there was nothing but chaos Amen. Amen. and storms on the earth, the Lord, with a word, spoke, and there was light. Yes. And he separated the light from the darkness. He didn't get rid of the darkness. He just said, this is your fixed place. You can't oh, move beyond God. there. Yes. And so in that, even them in their fixed pace knows how to praise the Lord because they're not destroyed. Mm. And they can still praise. But what that tells us and teaches us and reminds us that even when chaos is in our lives, it can come. But so far, and it has its time and its place. Amen. But eventually, the light will come. And therefore, you can praise God in the darkness yes. or you can praise God in the light. Amen. Because no matter what's going on, you're still called to praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And on the earth, after it went down deep down below, it went then to that which was created, the mountains and the trees and the animals and the creepy things and all what we were reminded once again that they too are called to praise the Lord. The way they praise the Lord is different than how we are, but not really so much so. Amen. They praise the Lord by just being, yeah. by fulfilling their purpose, they oh, praise the Lord. Oh, by being a tree standing tall and being fruitful and multiplying again and again and again, it praises the Lord in thanksgiving. 
for the mountains that are high above in the hills, they too praise the Lord because they understand he who sits high but looks low and praises the Lord. And for those creepy little ugly things that crawl on the floor and on the ground, they too learn the place the Lord, because they understand even though their place is low, God has not forgotten them. Amen. And God sees them, and they too can praise, praise the Lord. Lord. And so all these things praise God, but then he didn't stop there. He then became to us, for humanity, and made it real clear all of humanity is called to praise the Lord. It doesn't matter if you're a king or a queen, if you're a man or a woman, if you have a lot or a little, or even if you are small as Shiloh and Sean, everyone is supposed to praise the Lord regardless of your status or what you got or what you can give or who they say you are as long as you know who you are. Amen. Yes. And the who you are is what praises the Lord. Yes. And the reason why, if you understand that, you're called to praise the Lord, it's simply this. The scripture ends that says, let them praise the name of the Lord for he alone is exalted. Yeah, no. His glory is above heaven and earth. And he has raised up a horn for his people and praise for his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. In essence, what it's saying is, look, you know you're supposed to praise the Lord if you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you understand that there's a God that is greater than anything in your life and give that God first place, you should praise the Lord because you know what he can do for you. And just like heaven and earth, regardless of what they have and what they are and everything in between praises the Lord, if they can praise me, then you sure enough, who's made like me, can praise me. Yes. And if you're not sure if you can praise me, you know that horn? Mm -hmm. Hmm. When it's lifted up. Moment of teaching. The horn was tied to the bullhorn. Yes. And in biblical times, the horn and the bull to the Hebrew community represented victory. So every time the horn was present, you automatically have the victory. victory. And because Jesus is, the victory. is here, yes. and because Jesus has already won the victory, you have a horn that's connected to you, and you will always have the victory. Yes. So regardless of what you're going through or what you've been through, you know you can praise the Lord because you will have the victory. Yes. And if you would just be faithful, Faithful. Yes, God. Faithful. Yes. Faithful looks different for you and me. I'm faithful based on my relationship. Mm. And we can only be as faithful as your relationship. You've been in a relationship when folks have been unfaithful to you, haven't you? Amen. So you know what it looks like. And you've been in relationships when people have been super faithful. Mm. That's humanity. Unlike humanity that has their ups and downs and ins and outs, God is always faithful. Hallelujah. Faithful. Yes. God's faithfulness shows up when you don't show up. God's faithfulness helps you when you don't know where you're going to get your help from. God's faithfulness will love you when you feel unlovable or when others may make you feel like you're unlovable. God's faithfulness sees and knows you by name and still will always be for you. Yes. And so for all his faithfulness, I don't know about you, but if someone loves me like that, mm. I would want to be faithful too. Amen. And what I love about his faithfulness, it comes with grace and mercy. Yes. Amen. Grace to help me do what I cannot do Amen. on my Amen. own. Amen. He's faithful with his grace. I think we call it amazing. Amen. And he's faithful with his mercy. When I fall short and I don't exactly make it right, he still loves me and helps and gives me another chance. And so as long as God is faithful to us, we should praise him. Has God been faithful to you? Do you know his faithfulness? Amen. Have you taken a moment to say praise the praise Lord? So the Lord. I should also let you know praise doesn't mean you have to be loud. Mm. I can be loud. 
I can run. Y'all haven't seen it in your first church yet. I can shout hallelujah from the highest heavens. But true praise is not about the noise and it's not about the clashing cymbals. It's not about all the things that can help you make a lot of noise to make you get attention and hopefully your attention is focused right. True praise comes with a mind, a body, a soul, and a spirit fully committed to God. Fully engaged in a relationship with God. And out of that relationship with God, your praise stirs up. So your praise could probably look like my mamacita, who, if we were side by side, bless you in the hospital, hallelujah, amen. Her praise is usually just a simple wave of her hand. When I'm like, hallelujah. Or like my congregation when I was in Westport, and they praised God, and they sat, and they didn't open their mouth for this is the day but they would tilt their head and a tear would drop. That was their praise. I'm helping you to understand that we all can praise God in our good and our bad. It doesn't have to look the same. It just has to be sincere from the depths of who you are because God gave out of the depths of who he was and sent his son Jesus who loves us who honors us, who blesses us, and made sure that when we left this earth, we would join the heavenly chorus Amen. in their praise before the throne of grace, crying, holy, holy, holy to the Lamb of God. Amen. Jesus is worthy of our praise. Yes. God is worthy of our praise. Yes. That sweet spirit in all she does is worthy of our praise. Yes. So, beloved, let us Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen.